Hey, what's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. Go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Make sure that all is selected. It's easier to do on your computer. Uh, if you've been rolling with me for a while, hit the like button. Listen, the president of these United States just got through speaking uh, and he was just vowing his consistent uh, support um, with Israel. Israel is an ally of the United States, always have been, and he just vowed to uh, continue that relationship. He also kind of put a threat out there to anybody else out there who wants to, you know, go into another territory. Uh, I'm just, this is not political. This is just as it pertains to our stock, good people. Listen, we're, we're not getting into the politics of it all, but we have to so we can make money or not lose money. OK, follow. So and uh, also too, the FTX trial is going on. For those of you that are in crypto, let me spend 30 seconds on that. And, um, you know, the the girl, the girlfriend of Sam Bankman fraud just threw him under a bus and uh, literally said that she he had her do. Uh, some inappropriate things with about $10 billion worth of our money that they took out of one account and put into their own account, the Alamina, remember that? And so she threw him under a bus, did not look at him. They asked her to stand up and point him out, and she did. Uh, they also, she also stated that they dated for a couple of years and she didn't know what she was doing. She was following the directives of her boss. So all of that talk that he did about it was it was an intentional and all of this. She just proved him to be uh, the liar that he is. All right. So remember, this is brought to you by Stock Up You. Stock Up You, good people, is the second link below. All right. So what's going on in the market today? For those of you that didn't see my video from yesterday, I don't know what happened. It uh, it was it, it didn't get a lot of traction. I do know what happened, but we're not we're not going there. Uh, make sure you watch it. It's going to be in a video uh, that's going to come up in your box in your upper right, because I literally go over some plays um, that um, that are uh, performing well in this market. And I went over those plays. I showed you some of those companies in that video. All right. So let's look at what's going on here. All right. At the time of filming this, as we could see, the Dow is up 138 points. It's cooling off now. It was up much higher. The S&P and NASDAQ, they are all positive. But what is one of the driving things of this market today? Dow rises more than 100 points, boosted by sharp decline in Treasury yields. All right. Remember how we talked about that on yesterday? how the treasury uh, yields, the pre-markets of the treasury yields, uh, because, you know, the treasuries are tied to the banks and they were closed on yesterday. And uh, so we we went over that, how the futures were showing that it was going to be um, there. The yields were going to be cooling off. But it was two weeks ago, Jamie Dimon was talking about geopolitical risk as being maybe the biggest risk for markets still. How should we think about it here forward now? When we think about the conflict that is unfolding right now overseas, of course, we cannot underscore how vast the implications are from a humanitarian perspective and from a political perspective. And of course, it's going to send some jitters through markets. But what we have seen over time is that typically the impact in the longer run from geopolitical events tends to be somewhat contained. Now, of course, that wasn't the case last year with the Russia-Ukraine conflict, so let's dissect that a little bit. Two major commodities exporters uh, and a big shock to energy supply and food supply at a time where the world was very vulnerable to an inflation shock. So what we're watching right now as we see this conflict unfold from an economic and market perspective is, does it widen out? Do more countries within the Middle East get involved? What is the pass-through effect potentially to things like oil? Um, but at this point, it's day one. It's really early to say. We just advise clients to to keep their cool and composure at, at this time as things unfold. Most okay. I, they advise clients to keep cool. I advise my followers to do the same. Be uh, just keep cool. Don't get in heavy right now. We don't know which way this geopolitical situation is going to sway the market. 
though the market is proving to show itself extremely resilient against a strong job market against and that was remember that was just last week friday and then the war started on saturday uh, uh hamas attacked israel on saturday and then monday the market was strong and today the market is strong so i uh you know of course if you're a skilled investor and you know how to do options and you uh you know you can play the vix and 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 you're doing the cues good for you that's good but for those of you that are not skilled, that, that does not know options and all of that, it's a time to actually just sit back and on the red days, uh, just load up on some of your long term positions. Important thing for the market remains rates and the direction of interest rates. Is that fair? I think that's fair. I mean, when we think about where the Fed is going, likely headed towards a pause in November and from there on out, higher for longer. And we've been seeing for the last couple of weeks the effect that higher for longer is having on stocks as we realize, OK, we're not going to go back to lower rates meaningfully for a while. Um, we're going to have to deal with this type of rate environment. I'd also fold in earnings and growth, of course, oh, in sure. terms of how that yeah. continues to play out into the end of this year and next year. You think we're so. Um so some would believe that we have already been, I do believe that we've already been in a recession, right? I believe that, you know, we were in an earnings recession and she's going to talk about that in a minute. We've probably seen the worst of earnings for this year. And so what we could see is a quite a nice quarter coming up in which we see revenue still holding up as a consumer holds up. Margins looking a little bit better because uh, we've seen inflation start to, to come down and input costs come down. Wages start to come down a little bit. But as we head into next year, if we're not going to see 4 percent growth as we're tracking roughly right now for this quarter and we start to see even trend growth or below, that's going to put pressure on revenues. And, and what could happen next year is we see a little bit of a dip then. I mean, right now, expectations are for 12 percent growth in profits for 2024. That feels a little bit lofty. So we have to prepare ourselves from a market standpoint that that might not be the outcome. OK, so um, you heard the lady. Uh, she seems pretty smart. So the question is, where do we think the market is going to go uh, for the rest of this year? And where do we think the market is going next year? And remember, anything I say is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold or sell. But it's just, you know, things change and you have to change along with the market. Remember, we are not fighting against what we see and what we hear from the market, right? So at the point of or at the time of filming this, you could see that the Dow was up. But it's actually uh, kind of cooling off. It was up much higher than that earlier. S&P and NASDAQ are also green. And um, so I was going to do a survey and I saw that another influencer did the survey that I was going to do. I was going to ask you guys, do you think a recession is coming next year? And as you could see there, uh, this influencer is named Clear Value Tax. Uh, very smart guy. And um, he asked, will the U.S. economy be in a recession in 2024? And you could see the re the results right there in the top blue. Overwhelmingly over 80 so far, over 83 percent of you guys say yes after almost 9000 votes. Right. So. It could be emotion, it could be true. Uh, but I still see a path. Now, I'm not predicting that this is what's going to happen, but I still see a path of us closing this year actually higher in spite of what's going on, even with the geopolitical situation that's going on. I see a path for us to end this year higher. But I also see a path in 2024 for a recession. Now, I also agree with the lady that spoke that the Fed will be neutral after November. And then after that, it's going to be higher for longer until something breaks. Right now, the Fed may be forced to start reducing interest rates a little sooner. But if not, uh, he, he was going to he's just going to hold where he is. What will cause him to to reverse and go from neutral to reversing the interest rates is a recession. All right. And so that's what I feel. Uh, you know, the can just keeps getting kicked further and further back. And the higher we go, the higher this market goes, 
the further we have to fall when the recession does happen. Now, this is not a scare tactic. This is not, oh, gloom and doom, we're gonna fall off a cliff. There's a lot of money to be made, all right? There's a lot of money to be made from now until then. So now, since I believe that the market is gonna close higher at the end of the year, I am um, loading, I don't like to use the term loading up. I am adding to some of my longer positions rather than taking the risk of day trading. I'm adding to my longer positions in bigger chunks and then I could sell some at the end of the year. If you agree with this or disagree with this, let me know what you think. Don't just say I disagree. Tell me what you think, what you see for the rest of, the, of this year. Uh, in three areas in particular, will the Fed uh, be done raising interest rates in November? That's number one. Number two is where do you see the end of this year? Do you see it higher or lower than where we are from right now? And number three is, do you think a recession is coming next year or are we going to have a quote unquote soft landing? All right. Those are the three things I want you guys to think about. And then also to in closing, make sure you guys check out the stock squad. Check out the stock squad. Come over there. You got all four of us uh, laying down you know, our plays, our individual plays. And just know that this is not a, a room where you're going to get a thousand hot plays per day. Sometimes if the market is not good and the plays are risky, then uh, those that's when we kind of chill a little bit, myself personally. But the cool thing about it is one of us are always posting something, all right? And uh, so we just want to make sure that you guys maximize the amount of gains in the stock squad so two things i want you to check out link number one which is the class stock up you most of you guys here that are listening to me need it and then the stock squad will be link number two all right don't forget those comments i want to hear what you have to say right we'll talk to you later live love laugh and learn